for examples. Um, no more random than anybody else, the rest of the naming examples are from us. <laughs> so, um, this is my empire, uh, one, of, one of Playfish's games, and, you know, it's, uh, it's a good game, we think. The um, appointment mechanic that gets people coming back, we think is a little broken um, and quite one-dimensional, right? So, um, the appointment mechanic is that thing on the bottom left there, it says, you know, you've lost money, um, click here to the task collector. Well, it's, it's negative, first of all, right? And it's, um, it's not really that sort of meaningfully tied to the context of the game. If you think about Farmville and the harvest mechanic, you understand very well why you have to go back there, uh, you know, hour by hour to go and uh, make sure your, heart, your uh, crops don't, don't wither. Um, this one feels a little more sort of um, artificial, and as a result, it's one of our lowest engagement games. Um, by contrast, FIFA, um, FIFA is one of our highest monetization games, um, sorry, highest uh, um, engagement games. And uh, how do we do it? Well, we use cohort analysis to really pinpoint where we need to focus, where we need to focus. And it became very clear to us very quickly that newbies were doing fine, but our experienced users um, kind of weren't, weren't coming back as frequently. So we really need to focus on that elder game. Um, and so how do we how do we focus on the elder game? Well, we, we um, did a study to figure out what resonated with our elders, um, with our experience, or our veteran players, and um, they really resonate with this real player thing that we have um, via license with FIFA. And so we, we built the Be a Fan feature. Um, we built more leagues so that they didn't run out of content in the game. And we, um, we introduced a newsletter that published weekly what's new in the game and why you should come back. So, finally we get to monetization, right? So monetization is really about getting people to, to kind of go over the hump and take that first transaction and then graduate them from there, get them to be uh, persistent spenders and then scale them into being you know, large spenders, right? Um, the critical thing, as I think Alan mentioned, was you know, optimizing game balance so that you've got people fully hooked and engaged in the game before you try to pick them up for money, right? So you want them to already be pretty well entrenched in the game. Uh, at the same time, you don't want to wait too long because at some point they'll, they'll become conditioned to the idea that this is free and, and there's no reason to pay. So you want to optimize that game balance, find the right point in time to introduce the monetization event. Um, when you do that, you also want to make sure that it's as frictionless as possible, right? So the checkout experience has to be completely optimized, one to two clicks at most. Um, you also want to make sure that, that people see great value in what they're buying, right? So one, you know, one of the frequent things that people buy in virtual goods is energy, but we find it consistently rates very, very low amongst our users when we survey them. Uh, they really hate um, the value that they th think they got out of energy since it regenerates automatically by itself. So make sure that you're really trying to provide value. Um, and then you want to graduate first timers, you want to scale persistent spenders, and the way that we scale persistent spenders is by offering limited edition, high value, high ticket price goods, uh, functional goods that sort of um, give someone the edge in a sort of uh, you know, friendly, friendly competitive environment that is the social game. Um, so again, a negative example of this, right? So this is who has the biggest brain. Uh, this was a very successful game for Playfish early in its uh, early in its life. Um, it was very successful at garnering audience, but not very successful at monetizing. And the lesson for us was, you can't really bolt on monetization, right? At the time, it was really just a uh, race to get to audience, and so this did what this did that. But you can't then later go back and try to create an artificial instance for monetization. It has to be something that's sort of seamlessly part of the game from the start. Um, so, when, you, uh, when we try to optimize monetization, the key thing is to actually bring people across from sort of their first transaction into multiple transactions. And uh, there's a huge problem between the first and the second, right? So, um, you know, when you start thinking about how are you going to actually get people across into that second, third, fourth transaction until they're actually sort of becoming persistent spenders and coming back of their own volition, um, the, the key thing is not to leave money on the table. It's really, really easy to, uh, 
to create a blanket uh, incentive, a blanket sale that makes people want to come back and do transactions. And you're leaving money on the table if you just give that to everyone. Instead, you want to look at a per game, per segment basis to figure out, okay, what's the optimal point at which we can uh, incent people to become habituated spenders without uh, giving money away and cannibalizing the revenue source. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's about it. I'm just going to um, summarize real quickly, right? So and the most important thing, really, if I can give you one thing, is you know make sure that you have this top-down actionable analytics framework, um, and then optimize each stripe in the funnel, right? At the top of the funnel, it's your largest audience. Keep it light. Uh, in the engagement um, strip, you want to know your players. You want to keep it fresh, and then in the monetization, you want to bake it into the game from the start and make sure you're delivering value. And pretty much burn through those. Uh, I'd be happy to take questions uh, in just a couple minutes, but um, I also, I guess, uh, I'll make my pitch too. We're hiring, so I'll see you.